of the Cleveland Photographic Society. Uh, before we get started with the meeting, I do have some uh, important news and some, some uh, fantastic news. Beginning next Friday on August 20th, we are going to be opening the clubhouse for live meetings. Uh, those meetings, <laughs> those meetings will also be broadcast as well. So if you're not comfortable coming, uh, you can watch them uh, on a live broadcast. Um, like I said, uh, we will be sending out a memo with some guidelines about uh, things that we've done for the club to ensure the clubhouse is as safe as possible and some guidelines for people to follow so that everyone remains safe. So be on the lookout for that in your email. That should be coming early this week. So tonight we have a our first creative competition of the year. Um, and before we get started with that, I do have some other announcements that I want to talk about. Uh, we have some upcoming competitions. Uh, on August 20th, as I mentioned, that will be a photojournalism night. The deadline for entries to that is August 18th, and you enter those through Shutterscore. On September 3rd, we have a, our first black and white competition, and the deadline for that is August 25th. September 17th, another photojournalism night. The deadline is September 15th. And then on September 24th, we have a nature and pictorial competition, which will be our first print competition. Uh, the deadline for print competitions is 7.15 to 7.20 on the night of the competition. So you need to bring your prints in uh, so they can be uh, registered and so on. Um, some other announcements. We have some upcoming field trips. Uh, both of these happen to be sold out, but there is a waiting list, at least on one of them. Uh, the Madison Seminary on August 21st is sold out, but I know they do have a waiting list. So if you're interested, you can at least uh, try and get yourself on the waiting list in case somebody cancels. September 4th through the 6th is the Cleveland National Air Show, and the tickets that we have are all sold out. However, that is uh, an open event, and it, you would have some options of going there. It's a great opportunity to get some fantastic photos. Some other items of interest, uh, the Buckin, Ohio uh, Rodeo. Uh, there's one on August 21st and one on September 18th. These are not formal field trips, but basically uh, items of interest that you, you might find uh, great opportunities to do some photography. Uh, I also want to call your attention to uh, enrollment for the fall classes. That is now open. Classes begin uh, September 1st, so that's coming up pretty quickly. Uh, Wednesday nights will be Fundamentals of Photography. On Saturdays, uh, Photoshop Editing. Mondays will be Intermediate Photoshop. And Tuesdays will be Lightroom Classic. So if you're interested in any of those courses, uh, please get signed up as quickly as possible because we do have to send out some information about each of those classes to you in advance. If you know anyone that might be interested, somebody in your family, friends, uh, they can be local or they can be out of town. We are broadcasting as well as holding live sessions. So if somebody lives in uh, Arizona and they wanna take a class, uh, they can certainly sign up and take the classes online. So there's no need to be local. And then uh, again, you can watch this and all Friday evening meetings at your convenience on our CPS YouTube channel. There's a link on our uh, homepage on our CPS website, or you can open up YouTube and search for Cleve Photographic. You can also subscribe to our channel and you can choose to be notified when a new video is posted. All right, so again, welcome to all. And tonight uh, we have our first creative competition for the 2021-2022 year. Uh, tonight we have 107 images, 54 in the creative category and 53 in the pictorial category. Uh, here are our judges for the evening. Our first judge is William Banning and William's uh, comments will be read by Dennis Wirth. Uh, Bill Banning's passion and experience in photography go back almost 40 years to a 35 millimeter Minolta and a home darkroom. Uh, living in Santa Barbara, California, Bill is in his fourth year as president of the Channel City Camera Club. He retired in 2017 from a 40-plus year career in public education 
where he served as a teacher, a school principal, an HR director, and served a five-year stint as the superintendent of the Goleta Union School District. His photography interests are many and varied, uh, and some of examples of his work can be viewed at the website shown on the slide. Our second judge is Laura Dumb, uh, and her part or her comments will be read by Dan Sandy. Laura is a Cleveland native all of her life, and she is a self-taught artist who is first and foremost a painter. After working for several publications, she became a freelance graphic artist uh, and illustrator in 1986 with her own graphics art business. She retired in 2009 to paint full time. She doesn't worry about having a signature style, preferring to change things up on a regular basis. However, the one constant in her work is a bright color palette. She lives in a multiple cat household, uh, all rescued strays, and is very supportive of animal rights. In 2003, she had a one-person show titled A Cat's Eye View at the Smart Art Gallery in Tremont. She had a solo show in 2013 titled Bubba Palooza, where she created 30 different depictions of her cat, Bubba. <laughs> she must love Bubba. Uh, also works with her husband, Gary, acting as a colorist for his black and white cartoon projects. Uh, Gary was a judge at our last competition. Together, they created a 60-foot mural titled Our Love Letter to Cleveland, installed at the Cleveland State University Library. Together, the two have had several shows, one of the latest being Here There Be Monsters, tackling such issues as air and water pollution, overuse of pesticides, and other environmental issues. Our final judge is Russell Whittemore, and his comments will be read by Bill Keaton. Uh, Russell was a darkroom rat in his youth as he began shooting and developing film when he was about 12 or 13 years old. He taught photography while in high school. After a long hiatus due to life and career, he began shooting digital eight or nine years ago. He joined CPS in September of 2014. He serves as a moderator for several forums at the Nikonians.org, uh, which I believe is for Nikon camera users. He has placed several photos on the CPS back wall of fame and twice has been CPS Photographer of the Year. His work has been shown by the Pennsylvania Center for Photography, the New York Center for Photographic Arts, and the Jadeite Art Gallery in New York City. So those are our three judges for tonight. The judging criteria for those that are not familiar with the way things are judged, each judge will score each image on a scale of five to nine. The final score for each image then is the total of all three judges scores and images are judged on three criteria, impact, composition, and technique. So with that, uh, let's get started with our creative images. Bill says, the scene is initially engaging with a pleasant complementary color palette and intriguing content. The composition is clearly intended to emphasize centered geometrical forms. In general, this is effective, but I'd like to see the chair be more carefully aligned with the center vertical window frame. When strong geometric patterns define an image, small discrepancies matter. The image is by Glenn Petranik. Uh, it's called Alan Sullivan House, 20 points. Laura says, using the red, white, and blue faces lets me know that this photo is meant to be a political statement. I immediately got the feeling of doom from the man in the middle, looking at the viewer from, the me from his media tower. The direction and elevation, elevated position of each face gives a different feeling of disgust, mistrust, and inferred superiority. The only criticism I have uh, is that I think the sky and clouds could have been darker to create a more sinister mood and frame the heads with a better contrast. The image is entitled As Seen on TV by Glenn Petranik, 23 points, honorable mention. 
Russell says, intriguing slice of life collage. The visual effect of the frosted windows is effective. Ultimately, each individual image competes with its neighbors for attention. If the gestalt is to try and convey varied activities, the image of the building is thematically at odds with the other two images of people. The static appearing component reduces the overall dynamic feel of the composition. The image is called Austin, Texas South Congress Collage by Gary Marich, 20 points. Bill comments, you've created an effective starburst effect here and accentuated it well with bold colors and movement. The initial impact is strong. However, I'm not sure where the primary center of attention is meant to be. It also appears to me to have a slight downward rotation on the right. You might consider cropping on the right and rotating it a bit counterclockwise to create more balanced symmetry between the yellow sections on the left and right. The image is called Autumn Evening by Dave Saborik, 22 points. Laura says, to me, this photo has a look of a pastel drawing and is relaxing to look at. My personal taste prefers sharper lines and more colorful images, but I see what the photographer was going for, and I understand that everybody has different tastes. The image is called Blue Trillium by Debbie Leesky. 23 points, honorable mention. Interesting multiple exposure concept, Russell says, which does convey somewhat of a feeling of urban chaotic activity. The downside of the technique is the loss of any leading lines and an ability to work through the image. At the end, the eye has no resting place or destination. Visually, the prominent hood of a vehicle in the lower left corner weighs the image down, giving an unbalanced feel. The image is called Busy Day in NYC by Jane Sidney, 20 points. Bill says, lots going on here. I'm spinning, trying to decide where to start. I love the colors in the flowers. The purples and yellows are perfect complements on the color wheel and work so well together. Mother Nature has a great sense of color. The background greens compete for attention a bit too much for my taste. You might consider toning them down a bit with the HSL panel. The amount of blur from the spinning effect is appropriate, I think, but I'd really like to see the center point be more centered in the frame. Overall, a pleasing experimental style and subject that's worth pursuing. Just don't get too dizzy. The image is called Circle of Flowers by Ron Werman, 20 points. Laura says, I absolutely love this and want to explore it more. I would love to start a conversation with the photographer and hear the story behind it and know the process. My one criticism is I don't know the reason for the blurred brown parts in the neck and background. They stop the flow of my eye while I'm looking at it and it distracts me. The image is called COVID Self-Portrait by Elizabeth Klanick, 24 points, third place. Russell says, <laughs> Russell says, a pleasing superimposition of the egret on the skyline. Feathered like abstract background. This adds an interesting dramatic component to the image. The body of the bird has a slightly posterized appearance. The thin light border seen all around the legs of the bird is distracting and distracts from the more organic feel of the rest of the composition. The image is entitled Curves by Elda Baroni, 22 points. This is a bold, attention-grabbing image, says Bill. I like that you've left some cool tones around the edges to counter the central reds and oranges. Overall, very effective and evocative. I'd like to see what would happen if you dialed back the filter effect just a bit. 
It's not overbearing to me as is, but you're getting close to the edge. I'd also like to know if there's a way to balance out the tonal imbalance on the left, dark, darker purple side, and the right lighter green yellow side, perhaps sacrificing the centered composition with a slight crop off the left side. I really enjoyed this image. Well done. The image is called Dancing in the Dark by Marge Brady. 24 points, third place. <clears throat> According to Laura, there's a slight feeling of movement with the bright dragonfly shapes. The back background is rather muddy. The image is called Dragonflies by Nancy Kakelik, 21 points. Russell says, interesting attempt to convey speed and movement. A sense of left to right motion is conveyed fairly well but the overall softness of the image diffuses the dynamic concept. This could have been better preserved if the leading edge of the baseball was in sharp focus. The image is called Fastball High and Tight by Mike Kopkis, 20 points. Bill says, this is a clever and creative concept that demonstrates familiarity with some challenging compositing skills in post-processing. The masking and subject placement are generally very good with only a few minor edge detail problems, notably the upper transition of the model's right arm in the right, yeah, I'm sorry, in the left side of the frame. For me, the more distracting elements revolve around blending and transition of light, color, and focus. The light direction and color temperature of the model are inconsistent with the background and the blurred fairy dust behind the model feels like it's on an independent plane. The sparkles emanating from the model's hands appear, appear to be two-dimensional and a bit out of character with the rest of the surrounding environment. I offer these comments along with admiration for taking on the complexity of this kind of compositing. You're on the right track for sure. The image is called Flying Fairy by Serena Cernick. 21 points. Laura says, it's a nice, crisp, interesting photo. My criticism is that the lightning bolt stops the move, stop the movement along uh, with her hair just being vertical. It would have been more successful with the lightning coming across diagonally and with her hair having some movement. Perhaps the lightning could have come out of her hand at another angle. <clears throat> it a confu it's a confusing but well done photo. The image is called Flying Water Fairy by Serena Cernick, 21 points. Attractive pastel palette, Russell says, with good focus on the central subject. The image would benefit from a tighter crop of the subject. The overall effect has a nice softness, but there is a lack of tonal range, which flattens the image and makes the complementary of the green and purple elements more difficult to appreciate. The image is called Forest Fog by Bob Koaleski, 19 points. Bill comments, this is an interesting and technically solid detail shot of water meeting a presumably shore-based obstacle. The use of a relatively fast shutter speed has done a good job of freezing the motion of the moment, allowing the viewer to see detail in the foam and splashing water that would not be visible to the naked eye. The moss-covered rock creates a pleasing diagonal in the frame, but in my estimation, the image lacks a strong central point of interest. As a result, I find this to be relatively ineffective as a standalone photo. As part of a series that included broader establishing views and moderate close-up or middle focal distance interaction shots, it could be a compelling component. The image is called Frozen Waterfall by Bill Keaton, 20 points. Laura says, this is an intriguing photo. Looks exactly how I would imagine an insect human 
leaving its strong, secure, safe place, looking to see if there's any danger. The photographer caught her expression perfectly. The texture and size of the tree convinced me that she is very small. One, my one picky criticism is it looks like the right hand is missing and she is leaning on a stump of her wrist. The image is called Girl Not Whole Black and White by Ronald Wilson, 24 points, third place. Russell says there's some good visual interest in the abstract pattern of the bubbles. The cluster of largest bubbles is fairly well placed in the composition. The overall effect is somewhat static. The dispersion of the smaller almost do not serve to guide the eye well to the larger cluster. The image is called In a Disney Galaxy by Lori Zorns, 20 points. According to Bill, this is really well done and immediately grabs the viewer's attention. The composition supports an implication of thoughtfulness or uncertainty. It appears that the skin color and graphic designs were added to a monotone image. There are very minor edge mask issues above the wrist and index finger and below the earlobe that could be cleaned up. I'd be curious to see the effect of reducing the overall green-yellow saturation a bit. Overall, this is an effective and quirky image. She's obviously got things on her mind and her skin. The image is called It Ain't Easy Being Green by Elizabeth Klanick, 26 points, first place. Laura says, the way I see this photo is the photographer took parts of a car, which is not organic, and turned them into a butterfly, which is organic. The blue color is appealing to me. Well done, although not my cup of tea. That's my only criticism. The image is called Caddy Kaleidoscope by Dennis Wirt, 21 points. There is good extraction of the flower layer of the image, Russell says, with avoidance of posterization and flattening. The soft, the soft pastel background is also well integrated in this respect with effect the blending of the palette and natural appearing transitions of the colors. The centrality of the text and its clear message dominate the composition, giving an effect akin to a card or poster. The image is called Love by Donna Schneider, 20 points. Bill says, this composition is clever in concept and composed and composed effectively with a centered subject whose face is framed by the rope on the bottom and the arch of birds on the top. Unfortunately, the blending of the various components into a cohesive unified image is less effective here. There are mismatches throughout in color temperature, exposure, and light direction. The subject masking is generally good with very minor edge problems, but her placement on the rope is awkward. The perfect arc of the rope would be pulled down to a more angular position by her weight. I also note that the left side of the rope appears to be floating in the air. A very slight crop on the left side would correct that. You've taken on a challenging compositing project here and have demonstrated strong fundamental skills. Keep working on developing the more subtle and difficult tasks of creating a more unified and cohesive whole. The image is called Ocean View by Betsy Janda, 21 points. Laura says, a combination of organic and inorganic, which the organic, with the organic textures working very well. It's very dark, flat, and symmetrical, and it could have used something to break up the black background. There is not a lot of contrast, particularly amongst the deeper blues uh, of the four leaf clover central area. When I squint my eyes, the image almost disappears. The image is called Orchid of My Dreams by Melanie Plummer, 21 points.
Russell says the choice of foreground and background elements work fairly well together with a pleasing overall color palette. There are areas along the edge of the flower where the sharpness of the border is at odds with the loss of focus related to the depth of field. This contributes to some posterization of the overall image, along with the back of the flower being essentially out of focus while superimposed on the perfectly clear text of the background elements. The image is called Pink Anemone by Debbie Leesky, 24 points, third place. According to Bill, you've captured a strong moment with the dancer's body position and her flowing garment. Overall, I find it to be an appealing image. I'd be curious to see this with a vertical crop that reduced the empty spaces to her left and right. It appears to me that this image includes composited rain and surface water. In general, it's an effective concept. You might consider removing or reducing the opacity of some of the larger raindrops that fall in front of the subject's legs and face. I'm also not convinced that the lines of drops coming off her foot on the right side of the frame and the flowing garment on the left are effective in implying motion. Finally, the water's horizon seems to end abruptly. You might consider adding a slight gradient darkening just prior to the transition into the background black. The image is called Rain Waters My Soul by Susan Bestel. 24 points, third place. Laura says, this makes me think about the different ways people look at things, using words both backward and forward. Looking at it more, I see it has to do with uh, food, maybe a recipe? A comment on how the words feed my mind. Um, kind of puzzled, I love puzzles. Also, it's a great way to get someone to look at your photograph for more than 10 seconds. The only criticism, criticism is I wanted to see more of the words and that that is not much of a criticism on the photograph. Just a wish. The image is called Reflections on a Spoon by Sarah Zietlow, 22 points. Russell says, dramatic and dynamic capture, which has a clear narrative that's further reflected or refined by the simplicity of the individual visual elements. The appearance is almost that of an abstract flower. This is an example where a centered composition is effective with the off-center burst of the fireworks providing just enough imbalance to add some tension to the image. The image is called Repelling the Aliens by Rick Carroll. 23, point, 23 points, honorable mention. This is a strong, appealing composition, exploring lines and textures, says Bill. It grabbed and held my attention. I'm curious about the chain as a subject because of the background context. I suspect it is from a chainsaw, which creates a contextual cohesiveness that I didn't initially catch. If I also presume the background is a tree cross-section, I'm also curious about the concave shape that the chain is sitting on. Was the image manipulated to create this, or is it a natural occurrence for giving my city boy naivety? From a technical perspective, there seems to be a bit of crunchy image noise that could result from aggressive enlargement, sharpening, high ISO, or a combination any of them of any of them finally consider cropping out or otherwise correcting the distortion at the bottom of the right side the image is called rust belt art by gary marriage 22 points laura says i like the composition with all things pointed skyward the pastel light colors definitely give me the feeling of a summer day I really like the lighthouse in the foreground on the barge. My criticism is it doesn't have the strength of our city. I would have liked to see, have seen the original photograph. 
The image is called Sailing into CLE by Nancy Kakelik. 20 points. Russell says, intriguing image with elements of mystery. What are we looking at or through? The slightly out of focus inverted selfie in the right side optical element is arresting once seen. To my eye, this is the key element of the composition, but at the same time, the eye is easily diverted from it by the sharp focus and dominating presence of the perpendicular dark wood structures. There are a number of conventions broken by this image. If one assumes full intentionality of the composition is to partly conceal or obscure the self-portrait, then it is quite effective and adds to the mysterious overall effects. The image is called Self-Portrait Old Viewfinder by Dave Saboric, 21 points. Bill states, there is a lot to like here. The image has a strong impact, initial impact, and the toning choice is subtle and effective. The shadow lines on the spherical surface of the egg provide interest and an attractive design, and the dynamic range does a good job of avoiding blown out highlights. I did notice that the northeast edge of the egg in the upper right appears to have been masked the edge is unnaturally sharp and could use a touch of soothing of smoothing. The composition is interesting, but I'd be curious about options to crop it a bit tighter, perhaps tightening the left side and top to eliminate some empty black space, perhaps experimenting with bringing the bottom up to reveal a bit less of the reflection, maybe even consider rotating it 180 degrees. In the end, this is just me playing with an engaging image. You may find it's just what you want as it is. The image is called Shadows on Shells by Mike Kopkis, 24 points, third place. According to Laura, this photograph freezes the action of fireworks or an explosion. Uh, the night. Let me try that again. This photo freezes the action of fireworks or an explosion, the night sky very well. When I looked first looked at the image, I thought of a flower. My criticism is the black area outside of the circle could be a different color to give the illusion that when I'm looking out of an opening in the night. The image is called Star Flowers by Rosemary Flanagan. 23 points, honorable mention. Russell says a well composed and executed image with a fairy tale fantasy ambience that is reinforced by the overall palette and color balance. A few small details could be improved to put this over the top to exceptional. All the water and beach behind the subject is out of focus, but the posterior margin of the costume, especially on the left, remains in sharp focus, in spite of appearing to be several feet behind the subject. This contributes to slight posterization. Posture of the subject is very slightly off, appearing to very slightly lean back in spite of also seeming to stride forward, which is subtly disconcerting. Consider actually elevating the girl above the sand. This would take advantage of the leg and foot positions and give the impression of floating down out of the air to alight on the beach. The image is called The One That Got Away by Jackie Sieski, 26 points, first place. This is a nicely conceived and well implemented image, says Bill. It has a strong initial impact and holds up well to extended viewing. The lines and composition are very well balanced and the stark white background provides effective contrast to the colors, textures and shapes. You might want to work a little on the back on the bottom of the leaf frond on the bottom left. There's a small section that could be smoothed out a bit, but that's a tiny nit to pick in a very strong image. The image is called Tulips in a Twist by Vicki Wirt. 23 points, honorable mention. Laura says, being a fan of symmetry and insects, I see both in this piece. It's pleasing for me to look at. 
My criticism is the blank tan eye center seemed to stop my eye from traveling around all the interesting curves. The image is called Twisted Rails by Robert Boyle. 23 points, honorable mention. Russell says, this image has a wealth of visual and textual interest from the clash and overlap of tagging street art at posters or tagging, I'm sorry, of tagging street art posters and flyers, which nearly, nearly completely obscure the underlying structures and architecture. The effect is that of a particular intricate collage. There is just enough uncovering to orient the viewer. To some degree, there is visual direction provided by the proximity of the arch to the walk sign, but overall there are so many interesting elements that eye never stays in one place very long. There is no readily evident story or theme to pull out of the complex structure, so perhaps the medium is the message here. The image is called Walk Whichever Way by Jane, Jane Sidney, 22 points. Bill says, this abstract image is difficult for me to judge by any other than purely personal subjective standards. It's more confusing than compelling for me. I'm not sure if it's presented as solely form, shape, and color, or if it's an abstraction of a tangible form. Either way, it's not an image I can say I appreciate or understand. The image is called A Very Strange Creature by Marge Brady, 18 points. Laura says, looks like an organic flower made by a jeweler. I like the way the velvet looking petals dripped off to the edges. Uh, I can't stop looking at the center of the golden threads, which resemble insects uh, like eyes and noses that also resemble a caterpillar. Those are the feelings I this piece gives me. My least favorite part is the center area, which seems to arti seems artificial and too tight or too bright. I'm sorry. The image is called Abundance Reef by Melanie Plummer. Twenty three points. Honorable mention. A very well executed spherization, Russell says. The use of the ground reflection works well, and there is good complementary colors. The original subject is significantly transformed, yet remains very organic and is still recognizable in its appearance. The presence of a central infinity point also adds significant depth. The image is called Arrival by Brian O'Reardon, 23 points, honorable mention. According to Bill, there's a certain mystery to the source of blue light behind the inner door. The general state of disrepair and deterioration of the environment adds to the suspense. Technically, this is a strong image. The starkness of the blue room creates a strong impact and draws me into the scene. My only suggestion might be to add a bit more real estate to the bottom, which would avoid a sense of tightness I experience as the right side of the closet door frame seems to bump into the bottom edge of the image in an awkward way. Nice work. <clears throat> the image is called Behind the Green Door by Bob Koleski, 21 points. Laura says, I like this photo photograph better when I squint my eyes so the fine white firework-like lines almost disappear. The jagged wood-like pieces seem to gain more energy when they are by themselves. I don't understand this piece. Sorry. The image is called Bows and Arrows by Rosemary Flanagan. 20 points. Russell says, clever use of textures and layers. Layer blending of the face in the left flower could be improved as a sharp border is evident below and to the right of the face. Overall, the concept and execution is otherwise good and the idea original. 
The image is called Cut Flowers by Bill Keaton, 21 points. This is a fascinating combination of disparate forms, texture, and content, says Bill. It caught my attention. It made me want to explore each component. While I'm not opposed to the compositional choices that you've made, I'd like to see the left side of the frame mirror the right with a bit of the background showing. It's always a good idea to avoid tangents where a portion of the subject touches the side of the frame as it does here. The image is called Floral Ice by Lori Zorns. 23 points, honorable mention. Laura says, a, a sweet fairy tale like portrait. The thing that bothers me is I can see the sharp line around the girl that tells me she was photoshopped in. When you cut out a person or object from one photo and add it to another, it's best to soften the edges where the two meet or add shadows. The roundness of the moon also tell, lets me know that she's not sitting on the crescent moon, but standing in front of it. It's more of a collage. The image is called Girl on the Moon by Betsy Janda, 22 points. Russell says the austerity and simplicity, the compositional elements give this image an almost formal appearance or a formal ambience. This serves to fully concentrate the viewer's attention on the subject. The pose of the dancer, also somewhat formal, has at the same time significant dynamism and tension as she appears to be balancing her entire weight on the toe of the shadow. This is very well thought out and executed image, both from the standpoint of theme and composition. The image is called Girl Window 3 by Ronald Wilson, 25 points, second place. This is a confusing tableau for me, comments Bill. It's apparent that there are components that have been manipulated and are cloned and placed to cover portions of the base image. The masking and edge management, especially in areas where the waves intersect with the background water or foreground sand are problematic for me. The girl's stopped motion is handled well, but it's unclear what the intent of the composition is. Additionally, the blurred and bright foreground sand draws attention from the action in the frame. The image is called Green Surfer Caught in Action by Fran Marino, 19 points. Um, Laura says, I like the feeling of coming into the forest from the light. You don't know where exactly she is coming from. Seems otherworldly, and I like that. My only criticism is that the horse and the woman were looking at the viewer. It would give the photograph more power uh, if they were. The image is called In the Woods by Elda Baroni, 21 points. Russell says a softening blurring of the image gives it an ethereal, somewhat dreamy ambiance. This works fairly well. Although unsharp, the bright glow at the convergence of the path borders does serve to draw the eye in. Some of the foreground elements of the path and borders appear to have been repetitively cloned. As these are mostly horizontally oriented, this tends to show the visual flow into the center of the image. The image is called Into the Light by Vicki Wirt, 18 points. Bill comments, in this photograph, I really like the compositional isolation of the bird and branches and the bird's gaze toward the left side, as if watching or waiting for a companion or predator to enter the frame from that side. However, the creative aspect of added painterly texture seemingly globally applied by a software filter is distracting from an otherwise interesting minimalist image. You'll also notice on close inspection that the filter has created haloing around the bird's head and neck and along the bottom of the frame. 
The image is called Looking for Dinner by Joe DiStefano, 20 points. Laura says she loves the color and the feeling this gives her. A ballerina dancing with the moon. To me, this says confidence. I also like the way the image is centered on the page. My only criticism is that the shadow on her leotard could be a little softer or lighter so it doesn't distract from the eh, distract from being right in the center of the photograph. The image is called Moon Dancer by Susan Bestel, 21 points. Russell says this is a well-executed image with a good use of palette and textures and natural peering layer blending. The image is somewhat stylized and painterly in a good way with good composition. The image is called Night Owl by Jackie Sieski, 25 points, second place. Wow, says Bill excitedly. This is a bold, colorful exploration of zoomed motion blur with central subjects that more or less retain normal appearance. The brightest part of the image is the white light surrounding the subjects. While the zoom motion tends to draw the eye inward, we end up with a focal point of two subjects that is minimized by the darkness of the exposure in the center. In terms of composition, I'd be curious what limiting the frame to a central area that eliminated the non-red and white color areas might do. The image is called Portal Beyond COVID, Perhaps, by Rick Carroll, 19 points. Laura feels you definitely succeeded with the creepy factor. The movement of her dress is nice, showing that she is floating or landing on some, from somewhere. The mask and hair are frightening. I like the way she is centered under the Chris Holmes lettering. Um, my only criticism is I wish the entire photo were tilted a little to the right so that the background was straight. The image is called We're the Masters of Our Own Lives by Colleen Kluge, 20 points. Russell says a somewhat whimsical image, which is interestingly integrated with the underlying tree. There is sharp focus on the central subject. The chosen crop gives the image a sense of place, but probably could have been significantly tightened to focus on the true subject at hand. If keeping the present crop a shallower depth of field would be desirable. The image is called Wise Wisteria by Jacqueline Murray, 21 points. And that concludes the creative portion of our competition. Uh, we're now going to move into the pictorial images. And with these, uh, the first uh, 33 or so will be no comment images. So I will read the title and the maker and the, the points. And then when we get to the last set of images, uh, we will pick up with the comments. So the first image. This image is entitled A Citizen of Otherworld by Marge Brady, 19 points. This image is called Baby Bell Eating Tricks Treats by Fran Marino, 20 points. This image is called Bench by Dennis Wirt. 21 points. This image is called Blades by Rick Mills, 19 points. This image is Blue Heron at Beaver Marsh by Rick Mills, 21 points. This image is Bullfighter 103 by Ronald Wilson, 24 points, third place. This image is called Carib Grackle at PSV by Jacqueline Murray, 25 points, second place.
This image is Cellist on, on the Cleveland Waterfront by Susan Bestel, 24 points, third place. This image is called Egret by Maria Diaconu, 25 points, second place. This image is Egret Reflecting in the Water by Elda Baroni, 21 points. Flying at the Fair by Richard Ader, 23 points, honorable mention. Hay Bales Overlooking the Val Caroni by Jacqueline Murray, 20 points. Lone Fisherman, Jupiter Pier by Roger Summer, 23 points, honorable mention. Making Tin Plates by Robert Boyle, 22 points. Mama Goose Sitting on Nest at Sandy Ridge by Jen Cockrell, 18 points. Mom to Be by Jackie Sieski, 26 points, first place. North Carolina Beach Pier by Joseph Miko, 24 points, third place. Pelican by Maria Diaconu, 19 points. Riding the Waves by Bill Keaton, 20 points. Side of Waterloo Building by Ron Werman, 20 points. Sunflower Trio by Vicki Wirt, 23 points, honorable mention. Sweet Summer Corn by Melanie Plummer, 26 points, first place. <laughs> Terror at the Fair by Richard Ader, 23 points, honorable mention. The Battle of Strongsville by Rick Carroll, 24 points, Third place. The Elephant by Joseph Miko, 21 points. The Strike by Bob Koaleski, 21 points. Three Photographers at Sunset in Northern Arizona Desert by Ronald Posner, 21 points. Tiber River Reflections by Donna Schneider, 24 points, third place. Tiger Bee Fly by Lori Zorns, 23 points, honorable mention. Tiny Pink Dancer by Fran Marino, 22 points. Watch Your Step, Please by Ronald Posner, 22 points. Willie at Sunset by Roger Summer, 25 points, second place.
Works of Fire by Brian O'Reardon, 21 points. All right, the next set of images will be, we'll be hearing the comments from the judges. So the first one. Well, says Bill, seeing this creates a powerful urge to go brush my teeth and engage <laughs> in some aggressive preventive oral care. I really enjoy the storytelling here, bringing us into a time and place we'd never want to be. Technically, the image is strong and evokes curiosity and dread. Exposure is excellent, and the fairly neutral color palette goes well with the subject. My suggestion would be to think about how you might limit the busyness of all that equipment, perhaps with some selective exposure changes the window to the right is the brightest part of the frame. Maybe clone out the portion of window on the left. Consider a gradient darkening at the bottom. A fascinating place, well presented. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to floss. <laughs> the image is called <laughs> Antique Dentist by Glenn Petranik, 21 points. Flora says, this is an important reminder of how nature is orderly, wild, refreshing, and beautiful. I love the way the photographer caught, caught all the stages of the fern uh, formation as it grew. I'm happy the background is blurred, so your attention goes right to the important image. I have no criticism. The image is called Art Created by Nature by Joseph Miko. 23 points, honorable mention. Russell says this shot serves well to document the activity at hand, but lacks compositional cohesion and is generally busy in appearance with no well-defined visual movement. The right hand crop is too close uh, to the edge of the gondola. The image is called Balloon Launch V2 by Gary Marich, 20 points. Bill says this was among my favorites of the pictorial images. The technical aspects are exemplary. Exposure, color HSL, tack sharp focus on the heads and eyes, and attractive depth of field. Compositionally, the pair is centered left to right with the center of attention placed at the upper third of the frame. The tonal range moves from darket, darkest at the bottom to lighter as we move up. Everything is aligned to bring attention to where it belongs. The moment is a good one too. Whether it's playful or grumpy, the negative space showing the water through, showing the water below their chins might even be a heart shape. Nice work. The image is called Bear Fight by Richard Ader. 25 points, second place. Laura says, the light and dark pattern on the, that the two bridges make together are confusing at first, but then I really appreciated the view after really looking at it. It's really very pleasing. Then after going through the hard stone entryway, we can enjoy the beauty of the fall season. My one criticism, and I know nothing could be different because nature goes where nature wants to, uh, is the tree foliage before the bridge is a little annoying, only because the bridges are so interesting. The image is called Berea Bridges by Nancy Kakelik. 23 points, honorable mention. Russell says the subject of the children following bride under her veil is an appealing one. The image has the feel of having been shot from the hip an attempt to capture a short-lived opportunity. This can lend a spontaneous, authentic quality to a street picture, but in this case, the foreground figure is out of focus and largely obscures the bride, who is a major uh, component of the story. The image is called Bridal Party in Provence, France by Ronald Posner, 19 points. According to Bill, this is certainly a beautiful building, and despite appearing to be close to midday, the exposure and contrast are handled very well. 
with enough interest in the shadow detail of the building columns to add interest. Unfortunately, the day-to-day -day traffic and the tilted horizon create a distracting visual. There might not be much to do about the traffic, but perspective correction and or horizon straightening applied in post-processing would go a long way to providing a less skewed perspective. The image is called Europe Art on Building by Maria Diaconu, 19 points. Laura feels this has power and strength. I like the copper color with all the silver, then going into the sky on the bottom right. The, the photograph makes me want to know how it works, but then again, I love machines. My only criticism is I want to know exactly what that sign says. The image is called Exhausting by Rick Mills, 24 points, third place. Expansive and moody, Russell says. This image does an ex excellent job capturing the mood of a cloudy day on the beach. The human figures are well placed in the image and help impart a sense of scale to the composition. Focus is very sharp and overall processing exposure are well done. The image is called Foggy Morning on Northern California Beach by Donna Schneider, 24 points, third place. Bill says, I really like this image a lot. Simple, minimal composition and the ambiguity of whether we're looking at a reflection on an absolutely still surface or a manipulated, flipped, and composited image. At first, I wondered if there was too much gray, but the haze around the sun, or is it the moon, implies overcast or haze. Not only does this image have initial impact, but for me, it grows the more I look. The image is called Foggy Morning Silence by Roger Summer, 23 points, honorable mention. Laura says, this shows me that there are still places that ha have not been ruined by, ruined with or by humans. I like this stillness. My own, only criticism is I can't find anything that makes me go, wow. But maybe I should just sit back and enjoy the quiet. The image is called Forest of Pines by Robert Boyle, 18 points. Russell says, good shot, evoking the onset of winter in the wilderness. Blurring the snowflakes helps to give a sense of the wind blowing. The story of the buffalo ignoring the snow around them and on their backs while continuing to graze is compelling. The image is called Home on the Range by Dennis Wirt, 22 points. I like everything about this photo, says Bill. Perhaps most importantly, I appreciate the restraint in a tendency to make it pop. These colors, whether they've been tweaked at all with HSL or not, appear real and not a fantasized remembrance of being overly colorful. The composition could be a textbook image for the importance of foreground, middle ground, and background. Here, each layer with significant areas of interest. The composition starts us at the foreground boat and moves us through beautiful rippled water reflections. More boats, an active town plaza, colorful homes, a lush hillside, a church tower and fortress in the background. There's so much to see, yet it's organized in a way that allows us to enjoy exploring without being overwhelmed. Kudos on a wonderful image. The image is called Italian Coastal Village by Debbie Lisky, 23 points, honorable mention. Laura says, I love this. It's homey, comfortable, and I wish I could see it every day on my wall. I like the way the apples and basket are not in the center, but off to the side with a hint of the table below. I have no criticism. The image is called Light Painted Apples by Mike Kopkis, 24 points, third place.
Russell says effective use of textures and sinful composition to produce an appealing image. The colors are complementary, and the generally smooth undulating lines of the background are a good contrast with the grouping of rocks. Below the level of the rocks, the background appears out of focus, which somewhat detracts from the overall effect. The image is called Railroad Stories by Elizabeth Klanick, 21 points. Clearly, the red spot on a black bird in flight is the first thing we see here, says Bill. It definitely captures the viewer's attention and say, this is the subject. Unfortunately, the subject is too small with little detail and the surrounding environment is of little interest. It's unclear if what I'm seeing is a purposeful application of texture or software filters or simply artifacts of sharpening or other global manipulations. I would also suggest a quick horizon straightening or even a crop to remove the shoreline grasses at the top. What I like best here is the gradation of changing colors through the water as you move from upper left to lower right. The image is called Red Wing Blackbird at Sandy Ridge Park by Jen Cockrell, 17 points. Laura says, this makes me feel uneasy and kind of angry. Not a fan of all the filters. It looks more like a painting than a photograph. This image is called St. Elmo's Fire on the Lake by Jane Sidney, 23 points, honorable mention. Russell says evocative image with a good sense of scale provided by the figure walking away from the camera. There is secondary framing the figure by the overhanging rock outcropping and the dangling icicles, which adds or which aids in capturing the eye. The image is fully sharp from front to back. The weak sunlight and generally cool palette helps convey a sense of cold. The image is called Stebbins Gulch by Dave Saborik, 23 points, honorable mention. What a lovely combination of shapes, colors, and textures, says Bill. You start with a square frame, move into a triangle of flowers with graceful yellow arcs leading to a circle at the, at the exact center of the frame. Your focus point is right there on the center and along the yellow edges. I'm curious about whether you had an option to expand the depth of field just a bit. I suspect there's some intriguing detail in the magenta petals on the sides of the triangle. There's a zen-like calm to this. Kudos. The image is called Tulip Opening by Ron Werman, 21 points. Laura says, this made me giggle crazy. Bird is talking to a stick. I really like the composition and the sharpness of the bird and stick. I can see every little feather. Again, I like the fact that the background is blurred but shows a little hint of color. This photograph really appeals to the nature lover in me. My own, only criticism, and it's more of a wish, I want to put a comic word bubble uh, balloon above the bird's head with him saying something funny. That's what happens when you're married to a uh, married for years to a cartoonist. <laughs> The image is called Twig and Sparrow by Mick Russo. And that's our final image for the night. We want to thank all of our judges uh, for the efforts that they put into their comments. We want to thank our readers for conveying those messages to us. And we certainly want to thanks, thank all who entered. Uh, we invite you to send your feedback to us at info at clevelandphoto.org. And uh, that concludes tonight's event. For more information about competing or if you wish to join the Cleveland Photographic Society, please visit our website, www.clevelandphoto.org. Thank you all and have a good night.